So our research is focused on the dolphins in the St. Johns River here in Jacksonville, Florida. And so we start at the mouth of the river where it meets the Atlantic Ocean and we travel upriver to downtown Jacksonville. And the goal is to document every individual dolphin along the way. And by doing that, we're able to keep track of individuals over time so we can record their life story or what we call their life history. And so we're able to document new births and deaths and reproductive events, um, herding by male dolphins of the female dolphins when they're fertile, um, and lots of other different interesting behavioral aspects. So far we have over 280 adult dolphins and we have over 80 moms that have had calves. So if you add it all together, we're well over 300 individuals that we keep track of. Each individual dolphin has a distinctive dorsal fin, so it's almost like our human fingerprints. And so I can see the dorsal fin on their back when they come to the surface to breathe. And because of the shape differences and the nicks and notches that they accumulate throughout their lifetime, we're able to keep track of individuals that way. And so in order to do that from a boat, we're actually taking high quality professional grade photographs of these dorsal fins and we create what we call a catalog of individuals. And we're able to match our photos from every survey that we go out to the ones that we've taken before. Experience that they're gaining working hands-on in a scientific um, project is going to be really crucial because it's more about the hands-on skills that you have than it is the classes or the coursework that you're getting. And so by having this on their resume, it should give them a leg up in interviews. And it also gives them something interesting to talk about when they're doing those interviews or writing those essays for graduate school. Um, I've been interested in marine mammals uh, ever since I was young and just getting to know um, the research being done at UNF and um, being able to work closely with Dr. Gibson, it really got me interested in the program. Um, so I came and it's been great getting all the hands-on experience, um, being able to do my own research project and just be really excited about the research that's going on. I'm looking at um, male alliances in particular. Um, so males will tend to have um, a partner that they will spend the majority of their time with, will have a very close bond with him, and they will, for the most part, herd females together. And um, we're not sure of all the ins and outs of it. We're not sure if it's um, if it also has maybe a protection factor or um, what other variables there are. But it's a behavior that we've only seen. Um, we only see at some study sites, and it's extremely complex here. So sometimes males will have no partners. Sometimes they'll just have a partner, and then sometimes they have these tiered relationships where um, so and so will be partnered with so and so. So another group will be partnered with another group. Group, and then they make this massive super group per se. And we've only seen that behavior in one other field site. And so we've seen it here in St. John's River. And so my work is to figure out, um, just to identify all the individuals and hopefully shed some light on what variables are behind this behavior because it's so unique. So the male alliances where you have teams where it's one or two, maybe three males working together, those, we call them first order or first level alliances, those have been cited in a few other places. But what's really interesting is that bottlenose dolphins take it to the next level in the sense that male alliance A may team up with male alliance B to defeat male alliance C. And so it's this multi-level structure that is really unique. And before now, it's only been cited in Shark Bay, Western Australia, which is my prior field site. And so the fact that it hasn't been cited anywhere else in the world and people have definitely been looking for it is really interesting. And we have data now to show that it is happening here in the St. Johns River. And so we don't yet know why that is the case. And so that's where we're headed next is to try and figure out what it is about Shark Bay and the St. Johns River that they share in common that makes this strategy an effective one.